I um, will refrain from specifying what those steps are, but uh, the state police and other public safety officials have plans uh, that have been in place to respond in case of such an event to continue to protect the safety of the families of the Commonwealth, and we've taken those steps. Things are going to be changing. Obviously, society is going to have to adjust to more security. Things will have to change in the state. How are we going to adjust to that? My most important job today is to assure the families of Massachusetts that uh, as these events have unfolded, uh, we have been and will continue to take steps to protect their safety. Uh, as um, we get more information and determine uh, necessary responses, I'll be prepared to address those, but I don't think that's a question for today. I think for today, um, we need to first and foremost express our sadness, um, particularly to the families who may have been impacted um, and may have suffered uh, enormous losses because of this tragedy, but I'm not going to start speculating on future steps. Uh, I'm confident in the things that we've done to date uh, this morning and that we'll continue to do to ensure that our system of government can move forward, to make sure that commerce, uh, to the greatest degree possible, moves forward. Whether it's the Red Cross or the National Guard, any, any request, formal request for help, and if not, <coughs> what can people do who may want to go ahead and start helping people mm -hmm. work with this drama? I have spoken first thing this morning to uh, Governor Pataki's chief of staff and made it clear to him that we stand ready in Massachusetts to provide whatever assistance necessary as they obviously deal with um, a situation of enormity to the degree that we can't um, even begin to comprehend. Even when you see the pictures on TV, I'm not sure we can uh, comprehend everything they're going through today. There was uh, one request to the National Guard uh, to send some um, F-15s into New York airspace. That was, um, we honored that request. Uh, I believe there is a search and rescue team out of Beverly um, that was also uh, requested to be activated. We have done that. Uh, each of the individual here has relationships and established communication plans with their uh, counterparts in New York and we are prepared and I've expressed uh, personally to Governor Pataki's staff that we will send whatever support is necessary. We also are cognizant of the fact uh, that uh, Massachusetts hospitals may also um, be required uh, to help deal with the tragedy down there. Uh, we're prepared on that front as well. I'm not going to get into specific numbers. Um, we are responding to whatever requests um, come to the National Guard. That's the only one that's come to date. I think you need to know that we will cooperate fully with all the appropriate investigative authorities. Um, we are already um, beginning to do that, and I'm not going to go any further than that. I think it's premature. Logan Airport has uh, activated their Family Assistance Center, as I believe Joe Lawless informed uh, the public earlier. Governor, what do you tell residents of this state that are frightened by what happened? We left the city a couple of hours ago, saw people streaming out of many of the high rises and some of the buildings, the crew, the Hancock. Uh, these people are frightened, they're scared. Mm -hmm. uh, we all saw the images of what happened in New York this morning. What can you tell people that will make them feel safe about coming back to work tomorrow if that's when they're going to come back to work? Well, certainly, let me just say, I understand that people would be uh, scared. There are some, um, there have been some events this morning that are just incredible and uh, vicious and awful. And certainly a natural reaction is fear. Uh, that is what terrorists seek uh, to uh, unleash on our society, is a first and primary attack that has taken precious human life, and then secondarily to paralyze our economic centers and our system of government through fear. And I want families in Massachusetts to know that all the individuals gathered here with me are working diligently every uh, single hour of the day today and will continue to to protect their safety. We have uh, identified areas of vulnerability. Uh, those are longstanding plans that were in place and we're taking whatever steps are called for to protect the citizens and families of the Commonwealth. Governor, do you plan on reopening state offices tomorrow? Uh, we uh, took a precautionary measure um, because of the um, fact that often state and public buildings uh, can be 
viewed as a target uh, to send non-essential state employees home. Uh, I will reevaluate that decision uh, as information becomes available, but at this point in time, I see no reason why people would not be able to return to work tomorrow. Hey, the governor, there was a security lapse at Logan this morning. I mean, apparently someone hopped on a plane and hijacked it. I'm not uh, going to uh, confirm or um, comment on any information that is best released by appropriate investigative authorities. Who's leading the investigation? The appropriate investigative authorities and Massport officials are cooperating fully with them. Governor, we're at a level two alert here in Massachusetts, the highest of four. What would, uh, what would be involved in raising that to a level three or all the way to the top of the level four? I am not going to speculate on decisions that might be made in the future except to say that there haven't been any specific threats made against Massachusetts citizens or any place in Massachusetts. We are aware of the um, potential targets for uh, terrorist attacks and we've taken necessary steps to protect the public safety and I'm not going to comment on what we might do because I think it's important that people understand we are doing everything necessary right now to respond to the situation. Like many uh, Americans, I was at home with my family uh, getting ready to begin my day when my office contacted me uh, and informed me of this tragedy. Uh, wherever my presence is needed in order to make sure that the citizens uh, of the Commonwealth are safe, that we're responding to any situation that arises. We are here right now just because of the ease of communication from this um, setting. Uh, some of you may have experienced the fact that um, when something like this happens, phone lines tend to, to get uh, snarled. And so uh, at least in the early hours uh, of the day, it seemed most appropriate to be here solely uh, for ease of communication. Did that happen? Um, I don't want to comment on things. All I can say is that um, it was not always um, as easy as it should have been uh, for phone conversations to happen for me personally. And um, but I, I have problems with my signal when there isn't a national Governor, emergency. There was a lot of chaos this morning on the federal government on that side, where the president was, where uh, Colin Powell was, and, and there was an image that was portrayed to us that, uh, that the federal government was in chaos. I think it's very important for us to say, you know, the federal government, our institution of government is not in chaos. Uh, I will join uh, with all Americans uh, in supporting the president and making sure that whomever is responsible for these cowardly terrorist attacks is brought to justice. Can you tell us about your, your discussions with the White House, with any top level people, just on keeping those lines of communication open? We are um, responding to requests that are made. We are sharing information through appropriate channels uh, so that we can protect the citizens of Massachusetts. And I'm not going to go further than that. Governor, you said there was a specific threat. Were there any general threats? Have there been any type of threats whatsoever? You said there were no specific threats. There have been no specific threats. Uh, obviously, if a terrorist uh, attack of this magnitude happens in one part of our country, I think folks throughout our entire country country are responding uh, with an enhanced level of concern and enhanced level uh, of um, protection for potential targets. But we have not received any specific threats on any potential target. But like many other states in the country, uh, we are certainly, I don't want to make it sound like we haven't um, responded. We are responding. Uh, Colonel DeFava and the folks at the state police uh, have made sure that we are in a position to protect the citizens of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Thank you. I've been listening to uh, Governor Jane Swift as she addressed the media this morning uh, from Framingham. The governor saying that the state of Massachusetts right now is not under a state of emergency. Uh, the governor saying that there are no specific threats against Massachusetts residents throughout these terrorist attacks this morning. However, we are being told that Boston police are on high alert at this hour. Uh, the governor clarified one thing for us as we were talking about the special primary to fill Congressman Joe Moakley's seat. The governor saying that the primary will go on today as scheduled. We had been reporting this morning that Secretary of State Bill Galvin was going to ask the state Supreme Court to suspend the primary. The governor has clarified that, saying that will not happen, that the election will go on today because there have been no threats at any polling places or voting places around the state. So people who have not voted in that primary should, if they choose 
choose to go out and vote today. In addition to that, we're hearing that uh, flags are around the state, specifically at uh, the Prudential Center in Boston, are now being lowered uh, to half-staff at this hour. Uh, we're also being told that the Pilgrim nuclear power plant in Plymouth is on high alert and that officials there assume that other nuclear power plants across the country are on high alert as well. The Mass Pike is now toll free. Amtrak service has been suspended throughout the Northeast Corridor uh, for the rest of the day. The governor is saying that she'll make a decision on state employees later in the day whether or not uh, state offices will open. Just want to clarify uh, one point. The two flights that were involved uh, in the crashes this morning from Boston are American Airlines Flight 11. It was from Boston to Los Angeles. It crashed into the World Trade Center this morning. Uh, there were 81 passengers, two pilots, nine crew members on a Boeing 767. The second flight from Boston that was involved this morning was United Airlines Flight 175. It was flying to Los Angeles. They don't, they aren't saying right now where that plane actually crashed. Uh, there were 56 passengers, two pilots, seven crew members on board. Uh, that Boeing 767 left Boston at 7.58 this morning. Uh, we have some uh, videotape that was uh, shot around uh, the city today, uh, specifically uh, tape uh, I believe outside the Prudential Center, which was uh, evacuated this morning along with the Hancock and other high-rises uh, around the state. You can see they are there uh, lowering the flag to half-staff in honor of all the lives uh, that were lost today on this very, very sad day. What we're going to do now is we're going to rejoin uh, Dan Rather. For now, this is Joe Shortsley from the Channel 4 Newsroom. Bombed in the sense that American Airlines says two of its planes were hijacked and then they were then, we know not how, the details of them, but they were crashed into the World Trade Center itself. These scenes are where the debris is thick and the smoke goes like clouds and will for a long while in lower Manhattan on the edge of Greenwich Village, right at the tip of Manhattan, with the Statue of Liberty in the background. These attacks have occurred one day before the sentencing of an associate of Osama bin Laden in connection with the embassy bombings in Tanzania in 1998. The sentencing of this associate of bin Laden, and forgive my pronunciation, Mohammed Alokali, uh, the accused uh, in that were convicted in a court here in Manhattan. They faced the death penalty. They're charged with directly assisting the American embassy bombing in Kenya uh, and uh, in uh, Saudi Arabia. In the background, of course, there was another terrorist attack in the Cobalt Towers in Saudi Arabia in the 1990s, still unsolved although there were many in uh, the U.S. government uh, convinced that that bombing of the U.S. Air Force Towers uh, apartment building really in Saudi Arabia was connected to the government of Iran. That was a belief, but there was never solid evidence put out to that. These are scenes from earlier in the day, but now we're going to take you to Belleville Hospital uh, as soon as we can put up the uh, pictures. Uh, New York hospitals are overwhelmed with the casualties. In Bellevue Hospital, every available doctor, nurse, orderly, uh, working on cases of the, of the injured. If you're saying to yourself, what can I do? One thing you can do is stay off the telephone. That would be helpful, particularly cell phones. The other thing you can do is think about, not at this moment, but think about contributing blood because blood plasma supplies are going to be uh, very short, to say the least, as New York City deals with an unprecedented situation in which the mayor has said and the police have also said they're bound to be uh, uh, tremendous numbers of dead. The uh, leader of the Hamas organization has denied any responsibility in the attacks. Well, there'll be a long line of people denying responsibility for these attacks. Uh, leaders of the Taliban, the radical fundamentalist Islamic group ruling Afghanistan, which have been uh, 
the process of protecting uh, Osama bin Laden. Uh, we were told it had been uh, quickly gotten out uh, uh, what can only be described as a public relations uh, operation, uh, denying that they have anything to do with this. But all of that uh, will be dealt with as time goes along. Scott Pelley, uh, 60 Minutes 2 correspondent and another veteran CBS.